Thank you so much for joining us um, today. Um, Evelyn and me just had a meeting with the head of the Deutsche Bank, Christian Seving, and his uh, spokesperson. Um, we would like to uh, firstly uh, very much make sure that the meeting was confidential, so we won't talk about um, specific details of the meeting. We appreciate um, the, um, the invitation very much. It's not something we see all the time. Um, yet also our criticism stands firmly. We need banks like the Deutsche Bank to get away from fossil fuels. Um, we need um, hard decisions to be made about um, fossil fuel investments. And we need... <laughs> Hello. Um, and we need um, honesty about where we're heading um, towards a 1.5 degree world that is as safe as possible, that is um, a climate justice future, that respects the rights um, of people everywhere, no matter where they are born, or a world um, heading towards climate disasters, where only the most privileged and wealthy people have a small chance of staying safe. And uh, we have made a decision what we are fighting for, and we're demanding governments, but also banks and investors, insurances and so on, to make um, a decision themselves. And we are not only waiting for them to make the decision, but we're calling that out, we're confronting them. And um, that's what we are um, doing with Deutsche Bank, but also many other investors and institutions that are part of um, yeah, the whole fossil fuel world, but should be part of a decarbonized world. And I think we will start now with um, statements here. Evelyn will go ahead. And we will also comment on the G7 who are just now making, um, opening up their final communique and their summary about um, their decisions that they're making. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, there will be time for questions and answers and uh, interviews and so on afterwards. Over to you. Maybe you introduce yourselves too. If there is a wish for something in German in particular, I think we can do this afterwards as well. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Evelyn Acham. I would like to thank uh, Deutsche Bank for accepting to have this meeting with us. It's very important for me, someone from Uganda, a country that is experiencing some of the worst impacts of the climate crisis. Um, this is this is this is us calling out banks to put an end to any new fossil fuels because fossil fuels are killing people right now disasters are happening in my country right now so the dangers of fossil fuels are very clear and we do not need any new fossil fuels right now we need a we need an upscale in renewable energy and we need finance for loss and damage for my country this is to the g7 leaders my country and Africa and countries in the Global South are demanding for loss and damage finance now. We are demanding for climate finance now, which was promised years back to be delivered to the most vulnerable countries to help them in mitigation and adaptation. We are demanding you to provide climate finance for the people and stop investing in any new fossil fuel projects. Thank you. My name is Joshua Omanuk. A climate justice activist from Uganda. Yeah, I'm grateful for this opportunity today. And my message to Doja Bank is to be consistent with keeping 1.5 alive. When you make commitments and you publicize that your your efforts are going to be consistent with 1.5, consistent with net zero, and yet you are, you're investing in fossil fuel business, that that is not keeping 1.5 alive. We advocate that you, we request that you invest more in more sustainable forms of energy because those are the forms of en energy which deliver justice. Investing in fossil fuels in my country doesn't deliver justice. It in instead delivers injustice. My message to the G7 leaders is to put loss and damage back to the agenda and to deliver climate finance. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Edwin Namakanga climate activists from Uganda and part of the uh, Rise Up movement. Uh, we are here as us from Uganda demanding an end to the financing of the ECOP pipeline 
because we see that it's threatening over 14,000 households. These people will, will be affected by their livelihoods and then we only have one water source and this oil pipeline will be passing through this one source and that's Lake Victoria and it will pollute the water and we have seen that quite a big number of people are depending on this lake to get what to eat and it's greatly going to affect their livelihoods so my message to uh, Deutsche Bank and also the people in charge and people who are supporting these uh, fossil fuel new projects to go on is that to stop it now and make sure that they invest at least in renewable energy sources because we want a sustainable future for all because we can't adapt to loss and damage we can't adapt to lose our culture our homes and our livelihoods thank you so much some um People say that the climate activists like us, that we are the radicals. And uh, Antonio Guterres lately made very clear that the radicals in this world are those who still invest in fossil fuels, who still make fossil fuel investments possible, um, who fight for what the IPCC calls the worst case scenario. That is the um, climate track we're on right now. And that is not a future problem that is a present problem and here today sitting um, together um, especially the Ugandan perspectives make that very very clear what we demand from banks and investors and governments is a clear phase out not a phase down but a phase out of all fossil fuels this must include for the G7 a clear ending with coal in 2030 the latest it must include a clear end date for gas and oil explorations as well and it must include a clear no to new explorations of oil and gas anywhere right now some of the dirtiest industries in the bank in the world supported by banks and governments are planning more and more new fossil fuel explorations knowingly that this is clearly not in line with what the Inter international energy agency calls a safe pathway towards a climate justice future and what we are having to do here and we don't haven't chosen to do this and we have um, many more things we can think of but we need to call that out we need to call out these new investments and we need to call out who's behind them whether it's governments whether it's banks whether it's investors that is what we have to do no more new fossil fuel exploration that's a very very easy thing to understand and people who are in such powerful positions today in numerous institutions will have the cap capacity to understand that um, it's not rocket science it's very black and white for institutions like the Deutsche Bank this means being honest and clear about their investment plans are you planning to invest in climate justice are you planning to undermine climate justice that is a black and white decision and that accounts for governments as well we are very worried about the G7 meetings. We were worried about where Olaf Scholz would lead us in this G7 summit, as we couldn't trust him if we haven't, as we didn't have a reason to trust him to stick to 1.5. And that is a devastating um, acknowledgement that we had to make from a chancellor that is so relatively new in his office. We are seeing that some of the worst decisions could be prevented in this G7 meeting. We are seeing some strong language on gas being included. But of course, that is not what is needed right now. We need bolder decisions, we need braver decisions, and we need governments to be clear, are they planning for a climate justice world, or are they planning to undermine it? And this accounts especially, of course, for the G7, some of the richest industri industrialized countries in the world. And in regards to um, the wider decisions are being made, just a few words on the taxonomy. We're not only looking at banks, we know that banks need to be regulated. And for this, we look at the EU right now, making big decisions about the EU taxonomy. 
and of course the greenwashing taxonomy that was proposed by the Commission needs to be voted down by the EU Parliament in the upcoming weeks. It's some heavy and very bold and very concrete demand that is also not so hard to understand, I would say. And as, of course, for governments like the G7, they need to be clear. And in the light of the Ukraine war, a fossil fuel war that is funded and financed by fossil fuels, we need to we need governments to respond to this war with a ramping up of renewables, with climate justice, with uh, honest and uh, bold decisions about decarbonization everywhere. The answer to this war cannot be new fossil fuels, it cannot be new exploration, it cannot be new investments, but it needs to be just the opposite. Renewables, climate justice, and an honest discussion about where energy comes from and what the price is we are willing to pay for a peaceful future and a secure democracy for everyone. Thank you so much. And I think we now have, um, okay. we now have, do we have some water maybe? Um, can we organize some water please? Um, we, I think, have now time for um, questions, if there are any. Hey, my name is Steve. Steve Ernst on Bloomberg News. Um, you've made some, you know, you're asking, I guess, Deutsche Bank to stop financing Total, the company that's behind the ECOP pipeline. Do you have any other demands? I'm pretty sure, I mean, I know Deutsche Bank pretty well, and I'm pretty sure they, wa they walked you through their carbon commitments in their meetings just now. Um, and they're on the record, so you can comment on them. You don't have to comment on your meeting. Do you think those commitments are ambitious enough, or does Deutsche Bank need to do more with their public commitments? Thank you. Okay. Um, this is, a, of course, public record. Um, some of us spoke at the AGM at Deutsche Bank as well, so we also made it very clear in public that, of course, we need banks to step out of um, the ECOP pipeline. Several banks have done this already. Um, and um, at least according to some sources, the Deutsche Bank has uh, done this too. But of course we need, um, and we're asking banks like Deutsche Bank, um, all of them, uh, to step away from the financing from Total as a company. As we know that looking at the investment plans at, of Total, they're not even trying to hide the fact that they are giving nothing on the 1.5 degree commitment, that they're not planning to stick to anything that you consider climate justice promises. Companies like Total will not learn. They will not change their, um, the logic under which they operate for whatever it takes. This is what their investment plans and they are open, they are public, that is what they tell us. And ECOP here is just one of the catastrophic projects they're planning to go ahead, including new exploration in numerous countries across the globe, new gas fields, new pipelines, new projects everywhere. And those companies that will not learn, they need to be cancelled, and they need to be cancelled by investors like the Deutsche Bank. And then, of course, Total is only one company among many, so we need to look at the wider picture, at the investment plans that are being made, and we need to be um, bold about um, what is a 9 of 1.5 and what not. And as a bank, if you support a company that is not sticking to 1.5, well, good luck with your promises, but you're not sticking to 1.5 either. That's the reality of these investment plans that we are seeing everywhere. And of course, um, we won't stop a Deutsche Bank, but we will call out those investors um, for as long as it takes. Um, we continue to call out all banks investing in fossil fuels to stop investing in the fossil fuel industry. This is not only to Deutsche Bank, but to every bank that is listening to us right now that Africa as a continent does not need any new fossil fuels 
I, I hear countries, the rich countries like Germany, transferring their the drilling of oil to Africa, like Senegal, like to my country. But Africa as a continent does not need any new fossil fuels. We have so many things that are affecting us. Girls are dropping out of school. Women, the climate crisis is disproportionately affecting people in my community and the present is very bad right now. People are dying, children are dying. Women have to do more farm work. Children have to drop out of school because their schools have been washed away by the floods and girls have to end up being given away for marriage in exchange of bride price. So for us, we are already seeing the intersection of the climate crisis. It's too interconnected in our country. It's affecting education. It's affecting the environment. It's affecting our schools. It's affecting gender. It's affecting everything. And this is why we, we demand countries like Germany to listen to us, to listen to the voices of people from the most affected. If you don't believe that it is very serious right now, if you don't believe that fossil fuels are causing so much harm to the planet, listen to our stories. The stories are very real. The stories are being reported everywhere. And like Louisa said, we all need to take 1.5 degree target so seriously. And everyone can be an activist you can do activism in your in your capacity you don't have to stand on the streets with placards to like we are doing but like the banks the banks can look at the contracts that they are approving contracts that are sustainable contracts from sustainable people and not from fossil fuel companies and even the media most often <coughs> is, is is should look at what they report you need to put the climate you need to put the climate stories at the forefront. You need to put the stories of people from most affected people for on the front pages. And I, I'd li I would like to thank the media that is reporting this right now. I hope this can go out there and these stories can be amplified and people understand exactly what is happening around the world and not stay comfortable. Is there another question? Um, yeah, I think that's a, a very important question. In response also, I think, to um, the climate movement rising heavily in the last years, we see um, players everywhere reacting, yet the most common reaction we see is heads of companies, of banks and investors, not running to their strategy department, but to their PR department. Um, coming up with sustainability reports, with nice numbers, with uh, green headlines, with climate summits and climate speeches and climate everything. Yet when we look at the investment plans, it's not adding up and the reports are out there. Um, most, the, the vast majority of <coughs> banks, of investors, of insurances, but also of governments, have no plan how to stick to their so-called climate promises. And then these are not climate promises anymore, but then it is just climate wishful thinking that we just don't have time for. And uh, it is dangerous um, what we're seeing in terms of greenwashing across the industries, not just because it's boldly lying to customers, to the public, to governments, sometimes to the media, but it distracts and it puts people in a place where they are very, very likely to believe that it all will be better. And the same or similar pattern we're seeing just now in the Ukraine war, when we see all the arguments on the table why we must phase out our fossil fuels, they strengthen autocrats, they weaken democracies, it makes just so much sense. And just because it makes so much sense, we're seeing <coughs> There are people looking away from what's actually happening, that they're closing their eyes to the realities that's telling a whole different stories about fossil fuels being ramped up everywhere, about the gold rush on fossil fuels, how um, it's being called in the media recently, how reports have made very, very clear. Just looking and listening to the nice promises is not what is needed, but we need people, that's what we're doing as activists, we need media, we need institutions 
to look at what's happening on the ground. We do not care about your net zero agreements for something, something in whatever distant future, when right now you're doing the exact opposite as an acting in line with 1.5 degree. That is a message to Deutsche Bank, that's a message to banks everywhere and to the, G and to the G7 leaders just as well. like to add on that basically me i would like to base on loss and damage when countries commit that they would like to support mapa countries on loss and damage they make commitments for instance in the commitment of delivering climate finance of the 100 million that commitment has never been honored by any of the countries that committed to that and if you if you fail to honor that commitment you fail to commit to that promise and yet publicly or media you say you're standing with mapa you're, uh, you're working towards 1.5. That is another form of greenwashing. So by keeping the promises that you made, climate finance must be delivered. Another thing about loss and damage, loss and damage may not make sense to people who have grown up from Europe. You people who have grown in Europe, a loss and damage must, might sound like a, a fable heard from far. A loss and damage is, is real, and it costs money to recover. It costs money to go back to the state that you were in. For instance, in South Africa, there were floods at the beginning of this year. A lot of property was damaged. And when, the, when, the, when this damage came, it did discriminate between the rich or the poor. Everyone's property was destroyed. The same crisis is happening in Africa. If you don't keep 1.5 alive, they'll soon come to Europe. They'll soon come to all the other continents. So when we demand for climate justice, don't only look at it as something profiting only Africa. The climate crisis knows no border, and the climate crisis will affect all of us. Is there another question? In that sense, I think we will um, end this um, setting here. I would like to again flag, if the Deutsche Bank wouldn't have invited us to speak today, we still would be here. But we couldn't talk about how that there is, it's, it's, how it is a very positive signal to meet with activists and to be confronted like that. Um, CEOs have chosen otherwise in the past, and we, again, appreciate um, very much the dialogue that is happening. Um, there are some industries that we, I don't think, have an intention to talk to, um, but we came here knowing that we um, could talk honestly and uh, confidentially about things, and that is something we would yeah, like to flag as uh, um, unusual and worth uh, noting, again, at the end of the meeting, also knowing that it might come across as a slightly provocative with um, the signs in the background. Um, that is the reality we're in, facing uh, these, these hard questions and confrontations. We have no time to lose. We have no, times for, no time for blah, blah, blah. We have no time for um, empty handshaking, but we need to get down to things and we need to talk truth to power whenever we can, um, everyone, and not just us climate activists. Thank you so much for coming today. I think we now have time for some interviews or photos. Um, and I think sitting here, the, the sign kind of got lost over there in the wind. But uh, we are also um, facing a big meeting coming up by the investment, uh, by the insurance broker um, Marsh, discussing who could possibly insure the eco pipeline as insurances are breaking away. And we are, of course, calling out the insurance broker as well. Um, to step away from finding any new insurances for the eco pipeline. This is nothing that can be insured ever as it's a project that is doomed to fail, doomed to lead to more insecurity and damage and destruction. No insurance can, um, can count on that to be something close to a safe bet. So of course that is happening this week as well. It's a, it's a full week for climate finance and climate insurance and we are full on um, to tackle whatever there, um, and so is the wind. Mm -hmm.